About a year ago, I was considering exactly what it would take to build my own phone, based on a Raspberry Pi Zero. I didn't need it to do anything fancy, just have SMS and 4G capability. I mean, I don't use my phone like most people do. I rarely make or receive phone calls. I have Riot and Wire installed as apps, and most other functionality I leave to the browser. I wanted to do this because I'm worried about my digital privacy. That's why I got really excited when a company called Purism announced their phone that was all about privacy, the Librem 5. Hi, I'm Gardner, the Linux gamer, and let's talk about digital privacy again. The Librem 5 phone is free and open source. It's powered by Linux, and it has a hardware off switch. I think all of those things are rad. Now just so you know, I have pre-ordered the uh, Librem 5 phone, especially when given the fact that alternative phones are as voyeuristic as they are. Google collects so much data about you. How you use your phone, the contents of your emails and text messages, what apps you have installed, your search queries, how you type on a virtual keyboard, even things like your daily routine, where you buy your groceries or your usual commute and back. And if you're an iPhone user, you're not safe from Google's all-seeing eye either. Portions of iCloud are now operated by Google's cloud services, and there are many Google apps available, and in all likelihood, installed on your phone right now. We've grown accustomed, comfortable, and maybe even reliant on what some in my grandparents' generation would consider unconscionable violations of our privacy. But all of this privacy invasion has come with perks that make the bitter pill a bit easier to swallow. Things like nearly ubiquitous internet access, on-demand GPS navigation, a high-quality camera with you everywhere you go, biometrics as authentication, and even things that admittedly seem on their surface to be a good trade. You know, a loss of privacy for the gain of convenience. Now, I've had this conversation with many people, and I did make a video a while back about it too. And most people that I've talked to are like, meh, I don't care. Except that people do care about privacy. Most people I know would be uncomfortable letting me or anyone else go through their Amazon purchase history, or let someone have unfettered access to their Google Drive or iCloud accounts. After all, there's a reason people don't like being doxxed. So when I hear people say, I don't care, what I actually am hearing is, I just don't want to think about it. And fair enough, I mean, it is intimidating, but I think it's something we need to talk about. I mean, did you hear about this? The Raleigh Police Department have obtained at least four massive search warrants. What do the warrants do? Well, they require Google to turn over anonymized data on any user who was anywhere near four different crime scenes around the time the crime happened. One of these warrants specified a 17-acre area that included homes and businesses, meaning that if you were within that 17-acre space, your data was subject to scrutiny. Another warrant required not only Android location data, but also any info from apps that use Google location services. So your desktop Google Maps search, your Tinder swipes from iOS, even your call for an Uber through Amazon's Echo. If it uses Google's services, Google keeps all that information about you. And sure, it's anonymized, whatever that means. But let's say you live in that neighborhood and your data was scooped up because of this warrant. Does that make you, or the supposedly anonymized abstraction of your person, a suspect in these crimes? If a warrant was issued for your data, the legal implications are murky at best. Now, the police department said that the location data they received from Google was whittled down to a subset of devices that fit a profile they had developed for the main suspect. They went back to Google with those lists of names and required more data from Google. But my issue isn't only that the police received so much data on innocent people, data that could be extrapolated to reveal sensitive data about a person. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to look at locations and say, oh, this person probably lives here and probably works there. And according to public record, it could be Mr. or Mrs. Smith. See, my problem is that this is a novel approach to investigation, and it will inevitably lead to lazy, algorithmic crime fighting, and we'll end up with some kind of bizarro version of Minority Report. And that's not a joke. I, I, this isn't far-fetched. I say lazy because why get up and use your detective skills when you can just Google who done it and get the answer? They have all this data on you, where you are, what you're up to, possibly even who you're with. What's stopping the police or Google themselves from just mining for suspicious activity? Or even trying to predict crimes before they happen? This isn't science fiction anymore. 
and I don't know about you, but most of the people that I know have a real issue with algorithms. For example, people won't stop complaining about YouTube's terrible algorithm, or Facebook or Twitter's algorithmically curated news feeds. So if law enforcement started incorporating Google's big data services, who's to say that we don't start being treated as suspects based on nothing more than an algorithmic hunch? The other issue though is that, let's say this video has scared you enough and you turn off location services on your phone. Well, reports from the middle of last year show that Google's still collecting location data about you from cell towers and Wi-Fi signals. Oops. Similarly, there's been all this hubbub about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. The news seems to be reporting that it's a data breach but Facebook is adamantly denying that anybody's data was compromised. And strangely enough, I have to agree with Facebook on this one. Nobody's data was compromised. See, Cambridge Analytica used Facebook's API exactly as Facebook designed the API to be used, with no regard for the commodity's privacy. You're the commodity, by the way. If you signed up for one of those personality test apps on Facebook, you've consented to giving away all your Facebook data to that app. And if your friends did that personality test, then all your public data is on their server too. Now, I'd strongly recommend downloading all the data Facebook and Google have on you. It's pretty easy to do, it's really fascinating and a touch scary. For example, according to the location data Google has on me, my phone reported to Google where I was on average every 10 minutes. It also makes predictions about your activities, if you're in a car, on a bike, etc. The oldest info Google has on me is from Friday, April 11th, 2014 at 11.39 a.m. The latest? Monday, March 19th, 2018 at 9.44 p.m. And that was the time I downloaded the Google data. Every 10 or so minutes since 2014, Google knows where I was, and if the same holds true with other Google users, then they'd know who I was with, too. And if you're not creeped out by this, consider if Google was a person who had software on your phone that keeps tabs on you every 10 minutes, essentially spying on you and all your friends, trying to make predictions about what you're up to. That's stalker level creepy. And if you'd be uncomfortable with that idea, then why is it okay for a company to collect that data on you? How do you protect yourself? Well, you could stop using big data services, but in all likelihood, you're watching this on YouTube, so not using Google doesn't seem to be an option. Though Facebook is quite a bit easier to stop using, just keep in mind that Instagram and WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. Another way that you can protect yourself is using a browser extension like the DuckDuckGo privacy extension or NoScript. NoScript in particular prevents scripts from running in your browser that are spying on you everywhere you go online. You can also change ROMs on your phone to something that doesn't integrate Google services. That's if you have the technical know-how to do so. But in my estimation, you can't extinguish a burning house from the inside. Now, this isn't a sales pitch for the Librem 5 phone. Like I said, I've pre-ordered one for myself and I couldn't be more excited. This video is more of an admonition to take control of your own data and be aware of who wants it and why. The design philosophy of the Librem 5 phone is all about privacy, putting you in control of your data. Now, I strongly recommend reading their blog posts about the development process, from the hardware and software to the user experience. There's a link in the description below if you want to read that. Also, keep in mind that this is not just Google and Facebook that are spying on you. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Sony, Netflix, they all want your data. I hope this video has done enough to raise awareness around digital privacy. If you think it has, I'd encourage you to share this video with your friends, especially those who say they don't care about digital privacy. As always, I want to hear from you. What steps have you taken to secure your data? Leave me a comment and let me know, or hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer, which, yeah, I know. If you like the work that I do, you can support the show over on Patreon or LibrePay. You can also subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.